Welcome to part 17 of Zinc Ultra Scale Plus Ampeta Linux. This video is about customizing the Linux kernel and also customizing the device tree. These videos are in part supported by Blickfeld company. Blickfeld is a LiDAR creating company here in Munich. Please visit their website. This is the first video I am creating in year 2021. I wish you a successful year ahead. So here is a brief plan uh, for videos in 2021. I want to finish the two series I started in 2020 about partial reconfiguration and these series on Zinc Ultra Scale Plus and Peta Linux. There are a few more videos remaining. Then I want to start some series, some videos on PCI Express, design using PCI Express there we will use the ZCU106 board and the NVIDIA Xavier AGX, the one that you have already seen. In this year, I will definitely have some videos on interfacing with ADCs. And also, I will further talk about a new IP I have been working on, which is an XI multi-channel DMA capable SPI controller. Now, what I'm going to do in this video we are going to customize the Linux kernel in Peta Linux and we will enable basically the SPI dev driver so that we can use the XI quad SPI IP core that we have in our Vivado design. So here is our Vivado project. This is what you have seen before. And then we have this XI quad SPI IP core and this is uh, SPI IP core inside the PL. This is a Xilinx SPI IP core. This one is our own custom SPI IP core. That I will talk about it later in future videos. So we want to customize the Linux kernel to add the driver that we need to talk to this guy, to enable this guy inside our Peta Linux. I source the scripts related to the tool set and now inside the Peta Linux uh, folder project for ZCU104 I can issue Peta Linux config dash C kernel. In previous videos you have seen Peta Linux config dash C root FS or you have seen Peta Linux config get hardware description. So this one is new. Here we want to customize the Linux kernel. And there we can enable the driver that we need for talking to general SPI slave devices. So here is the interface for customizing the Linux kernel. Yours may look slightly different. Now, what I want to do, first of all, as you have seen, we have um, a system ELA core in our Vivado design and based on my previous experience I have seen whenever in Peta Linux in the kernel you have the CPU idle power management support active sometimes this guy can cause issues when you are using your system ELA so one thing I, I will do I will disable CPU idle PM support and this doesn't do any harm to us it only makes the system to consume slightly more power which at the moment we don't care so this is the first change I did the second change I, I do is inside device drivers inside SPI support I want to enable the driver which allows me to talk to the destination SPI devices so if you look here we have this XI quad SPI here. Now, this guy is connected to somewhere outside the board. So there's a SPI slave somewhere on the board which is connected to this IP core. Now, in order to, to create transactions, to create read and write SPI transactions on this interface here, I need to somehow tell the kernel that, hey, for example, there is a um, generic SPI a slave device, device here connected to this interface. So somehow I should introduce the device which is connected to this interface to my Linux. 
and this is what I, I want to do here in my Linux kernel configuration. I come here and I enable the user mode SPI device driver. What happens is now as I enable this and as I modify the device tree properly, I will be able to talk to generic SPI slave device which is connected to this port. So basically I will see this interface that we have here, this SPI interface that we have here, I will see this SPI interface as a node inside my Peta Linux. And I can open the node, I can write data to it, and I can read data from it. Basically, I can perform transactions. So we enable this user mode SPI device driver. This guy basically enables us to use this piece of hardware. So I enable this. Basically, I made two changes inside my Linux kernel. You can press escape key two times if you want to go back inside Linux kernel configuration. So I press escape keys two times, again two times, and here I'm exiting the Linux kernel configuration. It asks me if I want to save the changes. So I, I will tell, her, tell him yes. So it's basically done. Linux kernel configuration is done. Now that I have configured the Linux kernel, I can build the Petal Linux to make sure everything is fine. Okay, so far everything is good. So inside my Linux kernel, right now I have the driver that I need for basically talking to my SPI slave device. But there is another very important step that I should do, and that's the device tree. So inside my Peta Linux folder project, if I, if I go to components, inside components, if I go to PLNX workspace, inside PLNX workspace, there's a device tree folder. If I go there, device tree, then you will see the list of, a list of files which are defining your device tree. What's the device tree? I have did talked about device tree in my other YouTube videos. This is basically the structure that tells the Linux kernel what hardwares are present in our system at which addresses. So now that I have added uh, the driver for a generic SPI slave to my Linux kernel, I also need to update my device tree. So I need to customize the device tree and add a node specifically for that generic SPI slave device. Now, inside these files, if you look at the pl.dtsi, pl.dtsi, then this guy, the pl.dtsi, is basically the portion, the section of device tree that describes the hardware that we have on the PL. So look here what we have on the PL. We have on the PL, for example, we have this Axi GPIO. We have Axi GPIO. Let's look at the device tree. We have an Axi GPIO. The Axi GPIO here inside the device tree is located at a 0 address. Let's see what was the address for this Axi GPIO. The Axi GPIO is located at a 0 so this, this file you have here, pl.dtsi, is basically describing the hardware architecture that you have here in your Vivado project at the PL side. Now, there are similar files for the hardware that we have on the PS side. We, we, that they are being created automatically from the XSA file that we exported out of Vivado. We don't need to be worried about that. Now, so... What I want, I need to do, I need to customize this file. Why? Because here, if you look at this file, you will find an entry for this guy, for the Axi Quad SPI. So if I look here, I have an entry for Axi Quad SPI, and I have another ent entry for my my own SPI IP core, which we talk about it later. But now this is the entry for the Xilinx Axi Quad SPI. This entry is obviously not complete. This entry is basically describing the existence of this block itself. It doesn't talk about this connection to a generic SPI slave device to which we are going to talk. So I need to update this node and add to this node the information 
about the generic SPI a slave that is going to connect to this IP core. So I want to customize this file. How do I do that? If I go back to the root folder of my Petalinux project, if I go to project specification, and there, if I go to meta user, and there if I go to recipes, PSP, and there if I go to device 3, inside the device 3 folder, if I go to the files folder, then here there is a file, systemuser.dtsi. This is where you apply your customizations to the device 3. And this is where I'm going to add the information related to the generic SPI slave that's going to connect to my XI Quad SPI IP core. So I have already done this. I, I will show you the content, systemuser.dtsi. This is basically what I have added to this file. When you create your Peta Linux project, this, the file is empty. This is the entry I have added myself. And this is basically telling the Linux kernel, when the Linux kernel later gets executed on the board and reads the device tree, this is telling the Linux kernel, hey, for the Axel Quad SPI IP core, for the Axel Quad SPI IP core, which is located at A0020000 for this guy, located at address editor, located at this address. A002000. For this guy, I have all of those information I just showed you in the in, in the file uh, pl.dtsi. I have all of those information, but I have something more. And this is this is what I have more. And so what what do I have more? For for this for this basically IP, we have a generic SPI slave. We have a generic SPI slave, and this guy is going to run at 50 megahertz. This guy is going to have one chip select line. Our generic SPI slave device is compatible with SPI dev. This is basically the driver we just enabled. There is a driver inside the kernel for, for this specific device, and th this behaves exactly like a generic SPI slave. And that's why for the compatible field, I am selecting this guy. We are telling to the kernel, hey, for, for this block that we have here, we are going to have a generic SPI slave, which is compatible with this, with this driver. So I have already built Petalinux. I can create the um, images. I can put the images on the SD card, and then we can see together what happens as the result of the changes we made into our Petalinux. And we have prepared the images. The SD card is ready. Here is the terminal. I just op turn on the ZC104. And if I log in, if I look at dev, I see this node. And this is the result of what we did. This is basically the driver we enabled in the kernel and the device tree entry. Now, if I want to transfer data, through this SPI IP core to basically outside to create transactions. This is the node that I use. I open it, perform read and write operations to it. 